It's convenient to use dynamic symbols to represent point symbols on your map, because if you decide to edit the symbol later, you can just edit the master symbol, and it will automatically update all instances of it on your artboard. However, ArcMap has exported all of our symbols as individual graphics with no relationship to a master symbol. So here in Cities, for instance, you can see these are all individual little circles. We can use a script written by a cartographer who had the same problem and who made it freely available on the internet to solve this problem. So the first step in doing this is to check to see whether the script is already installed on your machine. And the script only needs to be installed on each computer. If someone under a different username has already installed it, you're ready to go. So to see if it's installed, you go up to the file menu and down to scripts and look for a script that's called jet replace with symbol. And if that isn't there, like it isn't on mine, then you have to install that. Well, it's really a pretty easy process. I've actually included a folder in the courses folder. So this is on Splinter in courses in GG310. There's a folder called scripts. And in that folder is this jet replace with symbol.jsx file. I'm going to go ahead and right click on there and copy it. And then when I go back and open my computer and then go to the local C drive and then to program files way down here and then Adobe and then Illustrator CS5 presets English and then scripts you'll see that there's a couple of other JSX files that are already installed here. All I need to do is right click in that directory and paste my jet replace with symbol.jsx file. And this path up here, the C program files, Adobe, Adobe Illustrator CS5, presets, English US, scripts, is also written in the Google Docs document online. And so you can reference that for instructions later on how to install this script. So now that this JSX file is in this directory, I'll close that Windows Explorer window, and I need to just save my file here. I'll hit save, and I need to restart Illustrator so that it recognizes that that new script has been installed. So I'll close Illustrator. When you get Illustrator back opened up again with your file, you can go up to File and Scripts, and you'll see that you now have this Jet Replace with Symbol script that's listed in that menu. So in order to use that script, we just need to make a new symbol. So I'm going to open up my symbols panel here and I'm going to zoom in on my map so I can see some of the objects here that are symbols on my map but they're not dynamic symbols yet in Illustrator. So to make a new symbol all I need to do is select one of these dots and then drag it into my symbols panel and I'm going to call this cities four or five because the green dots in this map are used for representing those smaller size cities and I'll say OK and then I'm going to go ahead and make similar symbols for the other types of cities. So this will be for cities 2 or 3. OK. And then the red dot is for cities 0 or 1. So now I have three different symbols here for my different levels of cities. To replace all of the green dots that are in this Cities 4 or 5 layer with this green dot that I've now made into a dynamic symbol, all I need to do is select that whole layer. So now I have all of the little circles that are representing Cities 4 or 5 selected. And then come up to File and Scripts and Jet Replace with Symbol. It's asking me for the number of the symbol that I want to replace each selected object with. The symbols are just numbered 1, 2, 3, and if there were more, there would be 4, 5, 6 in successive order like that. So I'm going to choose symbol number 1 because this is the symbol with the green dot. So I'll leave that as 1 and then click OK. And you'll see that it is slowly changing over these symbols. You can actually see it working one at a time. There might be a slight shift in the position of the symbol or the size of the symbol. One of the really nice things about this particular script is that it actually scales those symbols relative to the size of the original object that it's replacing. And so if you're making a proportional symbol map and you've got circles of a variety of different sizes, it'll actually scale the, the symbol that you're replacing it with so that it matches uh, the, the size of the original object or at least mimics the proportions between those objects. So it's, it's working away here, and 
eventually you'll be able to see in this list of objects in the layers panel that all of these circle paths will have become instances of these cities four or five symbol. So now that it's done, you can see that it's changed all of these symbols here into instances of the cities four or five dynamic symbol that we created in the symbol palette here. You'll notice that the symbol that you used to create this original dynamic symbol instance up here in the symbols panel is actually slightly larger than all the other ones. And I think the reason for that is that the other ones got scaled in the process of converting them to symbols uh, based on the size of the original symbols. It was part of that scaling element of this algorithm. And if you wanted this to be the same size as all the other ones, you could just copy and paste one of these symbol instances into the same position as that one. So the other slight problem you have to deal with is that this script automatically places all of the new symbol instances that it created in the topmost layer in your layers panel. And so you can see that it's listing all of these symbol instances and then way down at the bottom are the sublayers for things like the graticule and the, the and, and including the sublayer that the cities were originally in. So if you want them to be back in that cities four or five sublayer, what I would suggest doing is selecting one end and then holding shift and selecting the other so you get all of those symbol instances and then just dragging them back down into their original sublayer. Then I would just repeat that process for the other types of symbols in each of your symbols sublayers. Now that we've turned all of these symbols into dynamic symbols, it's really easy to go back and edit them. So say that we wanted to change this green dot to, for instance, a green square, we could just double click on that symbol, that master symbol example, and erase that green dot draw a square, we'll center that, and then go back out. And all of those dots have been updated so they conform with that new symbol definition. 